Our next speaker is Mikhail Kroll from City University of London, who will be discussing shard scheduler, scheduler object placement and migration in sharded account-based blockchains. Thank you. I'll present shard scheduler. Uh, this is the joint work with Onur Sedge, Alberto, Mustafa, and Etienne. Uh, for the outline, we'll start with some blockchain and sharding, then the, we'll define the problem of transactions in sharded blockchains. I'll present our system and we'll finish with some evaluation. So as you probably know, at this point, blockchain is well a chain of block. Inside those blocks, we have some transactions. Uh, the blockchain is maintained by some miners. Miners receive transactions from, from users. They verify them, they order them, they pack them in the blocks and put them on top of the blockchain. With those transactions or with the blockchain in general, we maintain some state. Um, so we have an initial state defined by the Genesis block and then every single transaction modifies the state. State is a, a state of, uh, of a set of, uh, of objects. We have two main data models for, for blockchains. So either account based where we keep track of balances of users uh, or a UTXO a model where we keep track of coins, who owns them and whether they were spent or not. So in this talk, I'll focus on the account based model. So blockchain is great, but it has some limitation issues, uh, so, so performance issues. So as we all know, uh, there is a problem with the low throughput uh, and also high user perceived latency. And this is because of this global consensus. So every single miner has to agree on the common state. So we have to disseminate transaction blocks to everyone. We have to store every single blocks and every single miner has to validate every single transaction. That's why sharding was proposed as one of the, uh, of the solution to this problem. In sharding, we basically split our, our blockchain into groups so that every single shard has its own uh, chain of blocks, its own miners, uh, its own transactions, and holds a subset of, uh, of state. And the hope here is that if one chain can support a specific amount of transactions, if we add more chains, we can, we can hopefully scale the blockchain almost arbitrarily. Quite often, we also have with the shard blockchains what we call a beacon shard or the reference shard. This is uh, just a shard that is responsible for coordination of the entire system. This beacon shard will uh, usually store the, the block headers of every single block being produced by every single shard for synchronization, but also will be responsible for assignment of miners to, to the shards. So as we had also during the previous talk, uh, in the blockchain, we have this assumption of the honest maturity of the miners, but then we have to assume, uh, we have to also make sure that in every single shard, we have honest maturity as well. So usually the, BK, the beacon uh, shard will generate some randomness and based on this randomness, we'll assign miners to the shards in an unpredictable way. And also the beacon shard will periodically migrate miners across shards to, to compensate for miners joining and leaving the network. So if you consider transactions in the account-based model, let's start with some simple transactions. So we have Alice here willing to pay Bob a specific amount of money. In the account-based model, if you want to implement it, we'll first of all need to decrease uh, the balance of Alice. Then we'll have to increase the balance of Bob by the same amount and also make sure that this whole operation is, is atomic because we don't want to make the money disappear or create new money out of thin air. Now, if you want to perform the same a transaction in a sharded blockchain. If Alice and Bob are in the same shard, this is easy. We just need one transaction. We put it in the shard where they're located and it's done exactly as with the single uh, chain blockchain. However, when now Alice wants to send something to Charlie who is in different shard, that's slightly more complicated because now we need one transaction in shard one to decrease the balance of Alice, another one in shard two to increase the balance of, of Charlie and also we need some synchronization between two shards to make sure everything is atomic. And it gets even more complicated with the smart contracts because now if you have, uh, if you consider this uh, smart contract here, we have a simple procedure. We have a list of users to pay. We have an amount we want to pay every single user and the function just iterates for the users. If a user has less than 10 coins, we just pay them some money. And again, if now all the users from this list are in the same shard, this is easy. We need a single transaction uh, a call calling the contract and it's done. On the other hand, if we have, let's say 100 users spread across 50 shards, now we need at least one transaction in every single shard to, to update the balances and also some global coordination between all those shards and all the miners that are involved in, uh, in those shards. So the bottom line is here that the cross shard transactions are costly. It can get even significantly more, uh, more expensive if we have smart contracts. So that makes object placements in sharded environment very important question. So how do we assign objects to, to shard? Because they can, they can, it can determine the final performance of the, of the blockchain. 
And currently we use um, a half space approach. So what we do, we basically divide the whole half space uh, among, among the shards. And then based on the account ID, we just assign them to the shards. This works well, this is simple. It's verifiable because everyone can just take an account ID, hash it and determine to which shard the specific account belongs. It also has, has a good long-term balance because if now we assign accounts to shards um, randomly, we might assume a long-term uniform load distribution. On the other hand, we have some classic problems from distributed systems. So we have no data locality. We might have two accounts that communicate very often, but are in different shards and then generate a lot of cross-shard transactions. And also we cannot adapt to any short-term load spikes because we just cannot move the accounts. So in this work, we, we, are, uh, we are asking whether we can migrate accounts on the fly across shards to improve the performance and eliminate of those problems. So our system is basically um, a system that observes the interactions between the accounts and the load balance uh, across all the shards, and then outputs some account migration recommendations. So suggesting, for instance, that this account should be migrated to this shard at this point of time. So to do that, we enhance the state of every single account with what we call an alignment vector. An alignment vector basically tells us how many transactions with every single shard each account had. In this case, we see that Alice had three transactions with shard one, one transaction with shard two, and zero transactions with shard three. Now, when Alice sends a transaction to Charlie in shard two, we'll increase her alignment towards shard two by one, and also for Charlie, we'll do the same, but with shard one. On top of that, we enhance the beacon chain with some load statistics uh, so that we have information about the load of every single shard in the network. It can be expressed either as a, a total size of transactions as in Bitcoin or complexity as expressed in GAST for, for Ethereum. Now, having those information, shard scheduler, when it encounters a cross shard transaction, first of all, we extract the list of every single shard that is, um, that is involved in this transaction. And then based on the load statistics that we have on the beacon chain, we choose the main shard uh, for this transaction, which will be the least loaded uh, shard across all the shards that are involved in this transaction. Now, for every account being modified by, the, by this transaction, but not being in the main shard, we ask the question whether it should be migrated to the main shard. And we answer this question by observing the alignment vector that we introduced before. The high level idea here is that if there is a strong alignment, from an account towards its shard where it's currently located, we are not likely to move it because it suggests that there is a strong community within the shard and we don't want to break it. On the other hand, if the alignment is not that strong and also the account has alignment towards other shards, we are more likely to, to move the account for load balancing. So with the simple mechanism, we achieve load balancing because well, the main shard is chosen based on the is the least loaded shard across all the involved shards. We preserve existing communities using the alignment vector. And also we minimize the number of migrations because we consider a, a, a migration only during a cross-shard transaction, which means that we'll never, for instance, uh, move an inactive account. We also introduce a migration threshold um, just to prevent accounts flip-flopping from one shard to another. Okay, so now we have those migrations. Uh, we know that they will improve the performance. So the question is, how do we enforce those? And for multiple reasons that we list in the paper, uh, we decided that miners should be the ones enforcing those decisions as a part of the consensus protocol. We can do it because all the decisions uh, are based on only on, on chain data, data and can be verifiable by everyone, by everyone in the network. So basically enforcing those migrations is a part of transaction processing. A transaction is considered valid only if it also contains the, the, the requested uh, migrations of the accounts. Now, there is still a problem because if you consider uh, this case, so we have Alice again sending a transaction to Charlie in a different shard. And let's assume that the shard scheduler recommendation is to move Alice from shard one to shard two. Now, if you're a miner in shard one, this is problematic for you because your revenue is based on the amount of transactions in your shard. And if you move away some accounts, well, potentially you will earn less in the longer term. So you don't want to do this. This is problematic because even if you made the enforcing the, the migration as a part of the consensus, now the miners are not incentivized to follow the consensus because they can just earn more money by, by doing something different. So that's why we also propose a new economic model for the sharded blockchains, basically to fix this problem and to align the rewards that every single uh, miner gets 
with the well-being of the entire blockchain rather than focusing on the on the shard they are currently assigned to. And for this, we use this mechanism of uh, migration of miners. So you may recall from from the beginning uh, that miners are being migrated by this beacon shard across across shards uh, over time to compensate for any network dynamics. So what we do for every single epoch, we calculate the total amount of fees that were collected by every single shard. So in this case, we see that shard one collected 100 coins uh, in epoch one. And then we calculate the participation of every single user. So for which part of this money each miner was responsible responsible for. So here our miner was responsible for 20% of this, of this amount. At this point, the miners will not cash this amount. But we wait until this miner is migrated in the next epoch. Again, this is unpredictable. So our miner goes to shard two. And at this point, it will cash 20%. So it's participation from before. But of the amount uh, gathered by this shard, by this new shard in the previous epoch. So 50 here. And because uh, this, those notations are unpredictable, we prove in the paper that this uh, motivates users to follow the migrations that we, uh, that we implemented and care about the, the throughput of the entire blockchain rather than focusing on a, on a specific shard. So just a few results to, uh, to finish. We implemented the whole system as a Python simulator at the beginning. We compare it against hash based approach, uh, so what you've seen before, and Metis. Metis is a graph partition algorithm, so we fed all the future transactions uh, expressed as a graph of interactions between accounts. And then we told Metis try to split those uh, accounts into shards in an optimal way. So we keep all the communities, but also try to perform some load balance. But even with this, we observed that shard should work and improve the throughput by more than three, uh, three times for, for stick six shards. This is because all the, the previous approaches, they have a fixed uh, association, so they cannot adapt for new communities being created or disbanded or for some short-term load spikes. With the higher throughput, we also lowered the, the average latency by up to 70%. Um, we also implemented shard scheduler on top of Trainspace. Uh, Trainspace is a sharded environment uh, for, with the support of smart contracts. We, we implemented our system on top of that and placed it on Amazon AWS. And again, we observed a much higher throughput and also reduced user perceived latency. So to conclude, uh, Shard Shuttler is a migration recommendation system that is fully deterministic, based uniquely on on-chain data, and can maybe part of the consensus protocol. All the operations are very lightweight, so we don't introduce any significant overhead on top of um, regular transaction processing. We also propose a new economic system that binds the rewards of every single miner to the throughput of the entire blockchain, rather than focusing on a specific shard, uh, which basically incentivizes honest nodes to remain honest and follow the, the consensus protocol. For the performance, we observe up to three times throughput increase and up to 70% user perceived latency reduction. And I think this is it. Thank you.